Story time. The time I met the presenters of Top Gear. Or the Grand Tour, as they'll now be known. Hello and welcome back to Chris, Meerkat Chris. Top Gear, a typically British TV car show, iconically featured Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May, and is pretty much now known as a Grand Tour on Amazon Prime. When I was a kid back in year six, I think it was, primary school year six, me and my brother were really into Top Gear. Dave. The UK channel was definitely a thing back then with Top Gear, as I often ran reruns of Top Gear constantly, what felt like at least six times a day, every day, forever. We were huge fans, we even used to have the trading card game that they brought out or something, I mean it came with the Stig helmet. When I was a kid I always wanted to learn to drive to become famous, simply to be able to be a celebrity guest and drive the reasonably priced car. I don't know if that's really going to be a thing now. Anyway, let's skip to the story, I'm rambling a bit. I think it was 2009, when I was in year 7, it turned out that Top Gear were going to be coming down to our local town, Middlesbrough, to shoot one of their episodes. It was the Mima Art Gallery episode, where they came down to the Mima Art Gallery and had to come up with their own artwork make it into a presentable art show thing at Mima for a couple of days and we made sure that we got tickets to day one because we wanted to meet Top Gear at the time. Definitely one of our favourite things. We wanted to meet them and be a part of the show and everything. So we made sure we got day one tickets and we did. So yeah, uh, had to get up super early for this. There uh, we got up at like half five I think it was in the morning that is to get the bus down to Middlesbrough and then we had to walk to Mima Art Gallery we had to wait in the cold on a really empty darkish morning and we rushed there because we were under the impression that it was going to be hectic it was me my mom and my brother who got up early to end up in this queue uh, we got there there was a reasonable amount of people probably about 20 maybe not even that hours and hours went by uh, before any reasonable amount of people turned up. I remember being stood in the queue for hours, it was just awful. I think that was the first time I'd properly stood and waited patiently for anything. Oh, and there is actually a photo of that line with me in it. That's me, in the newspaper. I think it's me. I'm pretty sure it's me. It is me. It is me. Apparently, some guys were telling us that the presenters of Top Gear were going to turn up in cars, and they did. Individual cars, one by one, one by one. I got out and waved and were all cheering and everyone and they started talking to the audience and everything and some kid at the front got the books signed or something. When I was a kid I really admired them. They were to me they were funny, they they had the dream job, they got to do what they want, they were just always having fun and they were a great group of friends with great chemistry and stuff. And, but yeah, I remember being stood in the line and seeing them in person for the first time and it was weird because Having, having seen them on TV for such a long time, like we must have watched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes, including the reruns. And to see them in reality was a bit odd to me. The character came across as like, you know, Moth from early days of British TV. This guy. The character came across as some as human being replicas made out of clay. Mm. Yeah, that was weird. But the real odd thing to me was just the fact that they didn't acknowledge me. I know this is going to sound weird, but remember this was the first time I'd ever seen anybody famous and I'd grown up with these guys. You get to know them so well, to the point where you feel like you're best friends with them. So to have them, for the first time you're meeting them, they get out of the car, all wave and stuff, and not look at you once. Not look at you once, not even acknowledge your existence was really, really, really destroying to me. Because they didn't know I existed, they don't know who I am. I know that you could say this was the same for everybody in the crowd, but I don't think it really hit anyone the same way as it did me. I don't know, it was a really odd, profound moment. I just felt like I was nothing. These people felt like my best friends getting up, waving, being popular, and I was just there, and it was like they just pretended I didn't exist. But the thing is, they didn't even know I existed. I'm, I was nothing to them. I was just part of a huge crowd. I don't know, again, that's just a weird thing that made me question everything and make me feel really, really, really small. Why do these keep flashing? 
It says demo mode. I've turned demo mode off. Every time I do it, it goes back to this, and then it goes back to demo mode. Oh. Yeah, that was weird. I had to kind of accept that I was nothing. That I was just a normal human being at this point. Um, anyway, they went indoors ahead of us all, of course, to get into the setup. They went in with cameras and stuff, like cameras following them. Proper, like, video cameras. TV cameras, sorry. So we all entered at the set time that we were allowed in. And you were allowed to walk around freely, I think. Mima Art Gallery is a small art gallery. Just walk around, we saw the car that was kind of like on a slant or something. Remember, this is day one, so no, no audience had ever been in before. We were all being filmed. We walked into the room, James May was presenting in a room in front of an audience. He was talking about some piece of artwork behind him or something. He was talking to the audience. They were all stood in like a rectangular crowd. And James May was stood in front of them presenting and talking about stuff. And I was like, I, I, I want to get next to him. I want to get up close and personal. Uh, yeah, because he had a camera on him. I think it was off to his right. So like if he's presenting to you lot as the audience, it, the camera was over here and it was kind of like a shoulder mounted camera. The a medium close up of James May. And I was like, I want to get in on this. I tried my best to get as close to him, as well as in frame of the camera. And I was like, shuffling my way past people. James May again, right here. Camera there, remember, audience there. And I shuffled my way around to the side about here. At his 90 degree angle. So if he was like here, there's me. And I was the only person there. And he was talking for a while, blah, blah, blah. And I think he noticed me like nudging forward like, but there was a plug socket on the floor for some reason, like floor mounted plug socket. A plug was plugged into one of these two sockets. I was a bit far away from it. I made sure that I wasn't next to that because I'm, I'm aware of health and safety and stuff. But in that one moment, James May quickly turned to me, looked directly at me and said, you won't trip up on that plug now, will you? I was instant. I, I was, I was, I was, speechless like i froze completely i actually froze like i'm not joking no no exaggeration i froze on the spot i was like knowing that he was looking at me acknowledging me as a human being right now in this small moment i existed to him and i was part of this thing and the camera was switching like kind of like hovering between me and james May. and my immediate response after about five seconds silence was no i shouted no it might have been a silent shout, but it was definitely a no at James May. One of the nicest guys on TV. To which he was like, that's Jeremy's fault for that. <laughs> and everyone started laughing and he never looked at me again. Why did I shout no? This was my once in a lifetime opportunity to speak, to actually have him reply to me properly. That's TV gold right there, the editors would have said, but no. I just shouted, no. I felt terrible. I felt terrible for James May and I felt terrible for myself and I felt terrible for the editors that would have to go through this footage. Uh, I started walking around the building, looking around at the rest of the art stuff. Jeremy Clarkson entered the room that we were in. It was a proper crowded room. You could tell that Jeremy Clarkson entered the room because he's up here. You can't even see. He was about, probably about here on me. Everyone else was here. He was at least here on every single person. People say that he's tall, but I don't think people will realise quite how tall he is, because he, he is huge. Um, and he was walking through, he was like laughing and stuff, and the camera was following behind him, he was saying some lines for the TV, getting through all the crowd, and then I was there like, because he, he's, he's up here, and he literally walking directly towards me, not looking at me, because he couldn't see me, because I'm too small. And I was like, and he bumped into me. He grazed my shoulder with him, and he practically knocked me like this. And he continued talking, and he walked on. And I was like... That was great. So at this point, I had made contact with both James May and Jeremy Clarkson. And then we entered a different room, and we couldn't find Richard Hammond anywhere. He didn't seem to be interacting with the audience at all. So we entered the reception area again. And it was just me, my mom, and my brother. Yeah, we were getting ready to leave, I think. We were kind of like stood about, like, what else to do? And then all of a sudden, Richard Hammond entered the room. But he was kind of like talking to the camera like this, as walking backwards, and we were kind of like off over there somewhere. He's kind of like talking to the camera. It was just one cameraman and just him. 
no no audience or anything kind of ignored us and then they left again i had no idea what they were doing that's the one thing i didn't get to make contact with richard hammond so yeah we were all exhausted from this long day turned out top gear had then gone to middlesbrough football stadium and did this so i don't know but something to do with another football team and then uh, we heard nothing for months it was ages after it actually aired on tv that episode the meme special it was called aired on tv really excited to see what actually went into the finished product and remember we were there day one again we told everybody about this as well and our family and friends and so we all sat down to watch it and it began and it was just a typical episode of them being given the task to about Mima and having to create their own art stuff so a good portion of the episode was dedicated to that um, and then when it got to the actual thing they had the audience to come over where they had the open day of the art gallery it was supposedly day one you know what I said about day one we were there in line in the cold dry weather day one really early in the actual episode apparently they'd been there quite a while before the audience had turned up and they were on the balcony looking over being like where's all the audience and yet i was there day one in a crowd that was pretty big it was a lot bigger than what they showed and then it got even weirder when they didn't turn up in cars because they were already here apparently in the show they were already there but they but in reality to me they showed up in cars and that's how they turned up a bit odd um i showed loads of clips from them actually sh showing people and presenting their art I, d I didn't recall any of this and it was all a bit odd to me it was only then that I realised they were using a different day's footage and showing it off as day one, as if this was what actually happened when it wasn't. For example, they pretended that nobody showed up to the Mima art gallery and that nobody cared about them having this art gallery going on, when in reality, tons of their fans turned up from Middlesbrough really early in the morning to show up for their day one opening including me. For them to just pretend and shove it off so they could film this, which was better for a joke, and maybe a bit of narrative, they'd completely lied about it, they made it up, they fabricated everything. It was at that point that I realised that TV really was fabricated. We continued watching the episode and there was absolutely nothing to do with me, my brother or my mum, nothing. Not one bit of footage that I saw in real life was in there. It's a bit of a shame. That episode of Top Gear was one of the most disappointing things of my life. I remember just sitting there afterwards just being really devastated. I just hope one day I can meet James May again and thank him for trying to talk to me that day. Because I'm sorry James May that I shouted no at you. I'm so sorry. You deserve better. Anyway, I genuinely thank you for watching. I hope you at least enjoyed some of this. Uh, these story times are a newish series that I've been doing. This is definitely not fabricated. I definitely know what it feels like to think something's true and then to have it just literally thrown back in your face and realise that it's all just a big huge disappointment of fabricated stuff. Remember to like and subscribe as well and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.